Hi, this is Mickey. Over the last few weeks, I've put out some videos about masking and, and I was using the adjustment brush in some of those videos and I talked about feathering and density and flow about the, uh, on the, using the brush and I've gotten some emails where people say, well, I understand what you're doing, but I don't really understand the concept between feather, flow, and density. So I thought I would cover that real quick for anybody that might have some questions about how to use a, a brush. To start out with, we're going to uh, make some adjustments to this picture. We're going to use an adjustment brush, and you can find your brush in your masking tools, or you can just hit the K key, and that'll bring the brush up. The very top is where your brush controls are, and to start out with, you can actually make two different brushes. You, you can set them two different ways and just choose A or B to select the brush that you want to use for whatever you're doing at that time. Size is just exactly what it means. You can change the size of your brush. You can also use a shortcut key, which is the left bracket key to make it larger and the right bracket key to make it bigger. Feather is that edge of the brush between the inner and outer circle or the gradient or how soft the brush is just by moving the slider. You also have short, short, shortcut keys for that, which is shift left bracket to make your feather smaller, shift right bracket key to make it bigger. The next one is flow, and just consider flow as an output control. So as you brush across the screen, if you have your flow set at 100%, then you'll get 100% of the effect each time you brush across the screen. If you have the flow set at 50, then every time you brush across, you will get 50% of the effect until you reach 100%. All right, so that's what flow does. Just consider it as your output control. Density is how much is going to be allowed to be put on by your brush. Consider density like a limiter or a governor. So if you have a governor on your car that says you're only allowed to go 55 miles an hour and no faster, and some trucks have that, then I don't care how far you press the accelerator, you're not going to go faster than 55 miles an hour. And that's how density is. If you set density to 50%, I don't care how many times you brush across the screen, you will never get more than 50% of the effect at one time. All right. Now, if you are like me, then I can't just hear the explanation. You got to show me. And if you show me, then I'll understand it better. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to have our feather set, I mean our size set to just a, a smaller size. We're going to leave our feather at zero and we're going to have flow at 100% and density at 100%. And we're going to take our exposure so we can see the change and bring it all the way down four stops. And we're going to brush across the screen. So you can see that it was a very dark mark, 100% applied with no limitations, 100% on each stroke. Now let's change our flow to 50%. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to brush one time across. And as we do that, you see it's 50% lighter. All right. I can go and brush again and again, and it will get darker till it hits 100%. All right. So that's flow at 50%. Now we're going to drop it to flow at 25%, and we're going to brush once across, and you can see it's 25% lighter. Now, let me show you as we brush across more than once, and we'll start with just one stroke right here, we're gonna leave the, the flow at 25% and the density at 100%. So that means that we can brush across any of these lines until we get to 100% and then we can't get any more. So we're just gonna brush once. And as you can see, no change here because we're already at 100%. But we are 25% darker here and 25% darker here. Now let's brush twice across right here. Every time we brush, we're putting more paint down. So no change here because we're already at 100%. But now we're a lot darker here and we're darker here. All right, because we brushed twice here, we are seeing more dark than we are on the one brush. Now let's, let's brush like five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're getting near that 100% mark. No changes here because we're already at 100%. Changes here and here because we've brushed so many times, we're pushing it all the way to 100%. Now density is, our flow is very important when we're doing some delicate changes. So if you have the flow set like at 15, 16%, as we brush across, see how delicate that is? So 
If we want more color or more change, we just brush again and we build it up, just like you do in painting. You just keep painting across the same area, building up your paint, building up more color and contrast or brighter exposure. And that's what Flow is doing for us. All right, so let's reset here and hit K key to bring our brush back. And we're gonna leave our flow at 100% and we're gonna now test our density. So we're at 100 and 100. And we should get a dark line, just like we did before. All right, now we're going to change our density to 50% and we're gonna do the same thing. And we'll brush across and now we're only getting 50%. And it doesn't matter if I brush again and again, our density, which is our governor, it's our limiter. It will not let us go beyond 50%. And let's do the same thing here, 25%. And it's 25% lighter. And it doesn't matter how many times I brush across it, it will stay at 25%. And just to prove the point, let's leave it at 25% and let's brush here. All right, here's what density, when it really comes into play. If it comes across any masked area, that is greater than 25%, it will change it to what the limit is that we have set. So this was 100, it's now 25. This is 50, it's now 25. This is 25 and we brushed across it and it you can't see any change, all right? So let's change it now to 50. Now, if this concept holds true, we'll see a change in our dark line, no change here, and this should get darker. So lighter, no change, darker exactly what we get. So we have a lighter change here because this is 50, this is 100. 50 and 50 shows no change. 25 and 50 shows a darker one. And of course, if we change it to 100, everything gets darker. Well, no change on the 100, but a change here and a change here. So flow is how much goes on with each brush stroke Density is how much are you going to allow cumulative total are you going to allow to be put on at one time, all right? Now let's start over again, grab our brush, and let's talk about flow. I mean a feather. So flow is at 100, density is 100, and we'll have feather at zero. If I draw across, you can see we have a very stark line between our masked area and our photograph. Now let's change our feather to 50% and take a look at that. And you can see that now we have a soft edge, not as soft as we can get it, but it still looks a lot better than the hard edge we have here. And then going to 100% on the feather, we have a very soft edge, which allows us to get in close to areas like this without a real stark line in place. All right, the secret to the brush is to find that combination of feather flow and density that allows you to make changes to your photograph so it looks natural and uh, enhances your photograph. So we're gonna look at this area right here, all right? We wanna brighten this area, but we want it to look natural. If we go and grab a brush and we have our flow and density and feather set at zero, we have a very stark brush. And if I change, let's say, we'll, we'll increase the exposure a little bit and let's add a little color to that exposure and we'll just paint in right like this. Nothing natural about that, all right? That's not a way that we want to use to clean up uh, or to enhance our photograph. But if we take our brush and we change the feather to 100% so it has a very soft edge to it, we'll bring our flow down to 10%, which means that I'm only going to get 10% of the effect each time I brush across and I don't want any more effect than 30%. Right? We're not going to change our tone or color. We're just going to work with these changes right here. So now all we do, because we're only going to get 30%, I can brush as many times I want till I get the effect that I want in this area. And you can see it's brightening it up, but it's very realistic looking because we have our flow and density set very low and we have our feather very high, so we're not seeing any stark edges. And if we look at it before and after, you can see that subtle change. And you can just keep building it up till you get it to just the way you want it. Now, 
The good thing about a brush or unmasking, we have this amount slider. So if I've hit this as much as I can, remember I only have 30%. So as much as I brush here, I'm not going to get about 30%, but I can boost it a little bit with my amount slider. So all I have to do is grab my amount slider. And as you can see, I do have some air, some latitude that I can bring it up a little higher. So we'll bring it up to all the way to 200. And you can see before, after, before, after even boosted it up to 200 because we had such a nice flow and density and feather. It looks very natural. You can't tell we went in there and boosted up that color. Now there's one other thing that I find that a feather and the right flow and density can also do or help you with is to mask around a straight line or line that has a very uh, harsh contrast change like we have here between the land and the horizon with the sunset. If we have, uh, we'll crank this up to about 70 and 70 and we'll put our feather down to zero. If we try to make changes to our, our horizon here, you're gonna see that we have a very contrasty kind of line here. So where the changes are, even if I lower my exposure, it's still a big contrast change. And if I ex really clean up, uh, bring up my exposure high, you can see we've actually kind of kind of got down into the land itself. But if we use a brush with a very soft feather, we'll take it up to 100%, and, and we'll leave flow and density uh, and, and our exposure up about the same as this, just to prove a point. And you can see it's already intruding into our land here. But when we're doing this, if we keep our horizon, our stark contrast line between the inner and outer circle, we have a very soft feather there. So the changes are made very gradual. And in doing that, it makes it look more natural. So be sure that you don't allow the paintbrush uh, get in, or don't let it get into the main center of the paintbrush and only use that feathered edge. You'll see that you get a much more natural change. And no matter how much I crank up this, you can see it doesn't intrude on the land at all like this to here. So it gives you a nice change, and of course this is very harsh, but you can see that even up here where it's real harsh, it's still feathered really nice. And if we bring down the exposure, it, it almost looks natural. I, I put too much magenta in there, but you can see we have a very good line here where we have a very harsh line, doesn't look natural. So that's a good thing about a, feather, a good feather brush is that you can do some nice subtle changes to uh, your photograph and make it look a lot more natural than if you used a harsh brush. Now, another thing you can do is you can use it for masking around uh, other areas with straight lines or irregular lines like this. We can make our brush a little smaller, but we keep our feather still very high. And if we keep our feathered edge on the edge of this house here or the roof and make our changes, we really don't intrude on that house. And we have a more natural look of the light change uh, between the house and the sky. And you can also, of course, use auto mask, which will help you even stay in those lines even more uh, like this. But the subtle edge of our feathered brush will make it look more natural. And that will even work around areas like this. So as long as we keep the plus mark on our sky, then we're not going to be uh, cutting into our object that we're masking around. And using a feathered edge, we get a much more subtle look to the areas that were around the, the object that we're masking. And even if we crank it up, you can see that we pretty much protected the edges and got a subtle change between the harsh edge of the building and the tree and the sky. Well, I hope that helped everybody out understanding how the, the basic operation of the brushes uh, works. My suggestion is just to grab a picture like this and start playing with your density and your feather and your flow and find that brush size and that brush, brush makeup with your feather so that you can work with your uh, masking a little better. No better way to learn than just getting a picture and experimenting. I guarantee you, you'll find just the right method to do it. I hope everybody has a good week. If anybody has any questions, please drop me an email. I'll be glad to help. And I will talk to you all soon.